Now for the air intake under the nose. It comes as two halves which means we'll be left with a centre seam line. Sometimes it's best to fix the seams on parts like this before putting them on the model, but in this case we can see that we still have good accessibility even after it's added on. So go ahead and put it in place. A point to note is I leave the excess sprue on instead of cutting them flush. This means we can file it off when it's assembled and we don't get left with a dent after cutting it flat. It's hard to explain but it's best to test it out and see for yourself. For the radiator coolers we need to paint the inside grey but the grills need to be black. So cut the parts off and add the flaps in open or closed but leave the grills separate. I've gone for closed as it's more simple. Now we'll start with the grey. I'm temporarily covering up the wheel well from overspray with Tamiya masking tape. The instructions tell us that they're painted the same grey as the underside, so we'll use MRP 112, spraying directly onto the plastic. Paint both the inside of the intakes and the wings. This won't be very visible at the end, so one coat is plenty. Now onto the black for the grills, using MRP 005 again directly onto the plastic. The grills only need to be painted on the textured face. Also, avoiding the sides will stop the paint from affecting their fit. Once they're painted black, we can use the dry brushing technique to give them a little bit of life and bring out the textured grill. I'm using the same brush and paint as we did on the cockpit. Simply put the paint on the brush, wipe it off, then lightly pass the brush over the part and the silver paint will be left on the raised areas, highlighting the details. At this point, you could also add a wash or any other weathering techniques you'd like. Once it's painted, we can assemble the parts. The grills need to be fully seated into the housing to make sure that it sits flush underneath the wing. You may need to apply a lot of pressure to get them in. If you still can't, just sand or scrape away at the edges to make them slightly smaller. Also, you may need to sand off the edges of the housing to get it into the recess. Remember that they are specifically left and right, so if they aren't fitting well, just check that they're the right way around. Tamiya Extra Thin or Quick Set is perfect to glue these in place. Moving on to step 35, we're adding the two panels to the rear of the fuselage. In some versions of the Spitfire, this is where the reconnaissance cameras were fitted, but not for the Mark 18, so we're covering them up. Making sure the two panels are cut out and trimmed precisely is key to getting a good fit. They're also left and right specific, so don't get caught out. Drop them in place and make sure they're centered before gluing them. Don't press them in whilst gluing as they may go in too deep. Once the plastic has glue on it, it becomes soft as it fuses together, so for parts like this you may end up bending or moving the melted plastic out of where it should be, so be cautious and trust the engineering of the kit. Now use the same techniques for the cowling bulges over the engine. These were added to Spitfires to fit the larger Griffin engine. For the guns, the fit is really not great, but focus on getting them centred and level from above and to the side. We want these to be glued on straight, but the pin won't do that for you, so you'll need to spend some time whilst the glue hardens, making sure they stay in the right place. Lastly, we're going to cut out and prep all the remaining parts, mainly the undercarriage. By now you should be a pro at cutting out and cleaning up parts, so I'll skip to the gluing bit. You can add the torque links for the gear legs by using Tamiya cement on the pins or carefully put it in place and dab on some extra thin or quick set. Both ways will work fine. Looking at the wheels we can see that the sprue has been added onto the tread, so trim it down with a blade or cutters and then use a sanding sponge to begin to work down the excess, trying not to take away the track texture. We don't want to sand down the detail as this would be very challenging to repair. A bit of patience will go a long way. Luckily, Airfix has moulded the wheels as one piece, so we don't have to worry about any seam lines. Now finish with the exhaust, and that wraps up the airframe construction. You should be left with a lump of plastic resembling a Spitfire. 